Okay, so let's now see how we would get our not found handler, which we've currently just put down here. And really, if you added any more to this, it would get a little bit messy uh, into a class. So let's get this uh, into our own class. Now we know that over on the slim source, we have this inside of a handlers directory. So let's just have a look at this just to see what we might have to do. Now you can see that this extends an abstract handler. If we just head over to this, you can see that we have methods like determine content type, and we know that that's being used inside of here, passing through the request so we can determine how to respond. Now what I've actually done is also brought up Postman, so we can actually uh, check about how we would respond if we were currently using an API. So we'll go ahead and integrate that as well, just so we know. Okay, so what we would want to do then is create our own class, extend the abstract handler, and then implement our own functionality. So we'll keep this open just so we can refer back to it. And really what you could do is inside of here, maybe create an HTTP directory or some kind of handlers directory. Really, once again, it depends on how you'd want to set this up. So I'm gonna create inside of here a not found handler, and we'll go ahead and set this up. So we know that this is now part of our own application. We can pretty much do what we want and this is under handlers. So let's create our not found handler class. And really importantly, we'll go ahead and extend that abstract handler so we have access to that determine content type method. So uh, this is within, it's not namespaced here because it's under slim handlers. So we just need to pull in slim handlers abstract handler. So let's come over and pull this in. So use slim handlers abstract handler. And of course we can go ahead and extend that. Now this is gonna work in exactly the same way as the original handler. We just need to update down here what we return for this container item. Now in this case, we know that over here we have an invoke method, in which case we get the request and the response through. So we can pass them in uh, either type hinted or not. It doesn't matter too much, but we can go ahead and do that as well. So over in our handler, we wanna pull these in. So it's similar to the uh, existing handler create our invoke magic method like so. Go ahead and allow these to be passed in. So we know that we have a request interface called request and we have a response interface here called response. And that just makes sure that we are passing the right thing through. And now we can pretty much do whatever we want. Now to test this out, what we could do is just kill the page and just write anything in here, just so we know that this is working and then we can start to add whatever we want onto it. Remember, we need to return a view or at least render a view if we are on web, if we are on an API, e.g. if we're working with JSON, we want to output some JSON. So kind of bringing everything together that we've already learned. Okay, so over in app, we don't need to do this anymore because the reason that we included this closure here is so when it's called, we get our response and our request, and then we can use them in here. We don't need to do that anymore. All we need to do is return a new app handlers not found handler, like so, and that's it. So now if something isn't found, we had this before, give it a refresh and we see that ABC that we died out earlier. Now, of course, that's not good enough. We need to go ahead and uh, update this a little bit more. So let's first of all look at how we would do this with views. Now, similarly to using things like middleware or our controller, what we can do is pass dependencies through to this class that we need. Now, in our case, we need to be able to render a view. So quite simply from the container that we get through here, we're gonna go ahead and pass our view in. So this is much tidier. We don't need to add anything else to here. Anything else we need to handle will just go inside of this class. So let's go ahead and accept in our views. So let's create our constructor here. And then we know that into this, we're gonna get uh, something and we can just call it view. Go ahead and create our protected property just up here to hold that. So similar uh, to anything else that we would do. Go ahead and set that and we are pretty much done. Now we can type hint this as well if we want to. It's always a good idea to do this. And we know that what we pass through out of our container is an instance of slim views twig. So over here, we just go ahead and pull that in and then go ahead and type hint it like so, and we're done. So now what we can do is return this view render. We know that into this, when it's called, we get our response. So we can pass our response in. 
we choose what we want to render out. Now we already created that earlier under views and errors and it's 404.twig. So we just say errors 404.twig and then of course we are done. Now we still need to set the status. We'll do that in just a second, but let's check that this has worked and there we go. We get our not found view back again, but this time we've tidied everything away into its own class. Now, of course here, what we would do is say with status 404 and then we are pretty much set up. So if you wanted to leave it like that, that would be absolutely fine. But the concern is if something isn't found within an API that you're building, you're going to get that view returned to you like so. Now, this isn't always a good idea. You may wish to actually return JSON if something isn't found. That's much better. Now, notice that the status code is the same, which is fine. We don't need to really fiddle around with that. We can keep the same status code, but we do want to respond with JSON. So what we did then is over here, extend our abstract handler. So really what we can do is just have a look at what's going on down here. Now we saw this earlier where we grab the content type using that determine content type method from our abstract handler. So we can pretty much do the same thing and just override anything that we need. So in our not found handler, just in here, let's go ahead and pull that in. And then let's separate this out into another method. So let's see how it's done here. First of all, you can see that it is checking a JSON request, it's checking an HTML request, and we're just assigning output to render HTML not found. So let's come down and have a look at render HTML not found. All this is actually doing is just returning this string. So you could even do something similar to here, pass down a home URL if you wanted to, all the codes here so you can go ahead and reuse that. So what we would want to do in this case is over in our not found handler, return this. So we don't really need to return the status because we know that it's always going to be a 404 because this is our not found handler. So let's say protected function render not found HTML. And we'll go ahead and simply return this like so. Now notice that we have our response here. So it's probably going to be a good idea to pass through our response like that. And we can pretty much do the same thing for JSON as well. So we're going to have render not found JSON like so. And of course that would be protected function. Go ahead and return. And again, we could take in our response like so. We're going to say return response with JSON. Pass in an array because remember our with JSON method will automatically uh, encode this for us. And then we could say something like error not found maybe like so. Now, in this case, it would probably be a better idea to call this something like response with JSON or response with HTML, but really feel free to name these however you want. So now all we need to do is a similar thing to our switch statement over here in the slim framework, switch the content type and then go ahead and do whatever you want. And of course you can include the default if you want. Now I'm going to keep this really simple and we're just going to switch the content type, check the content type and then return. And then uh, if we don't have any handler for this, then we'll just fail. So go ahead and switch on the content type. Very simple. And then of course here we're going to say case. We're going to break just down here and then in here we can do whatever we want. Now we know that we always want to return a 404 status along with this. So if we just get rid of this line here, we're going to again assign something to some kind of output much like uh, is done here. So in this case, we could just say output equals. And if, for example, we have application JSON, we know that we want to render out JSON response. So in this case, we just call the render not found JSON. So this render not found JSON passing in the response. And then if it is text HTML like so, then we know that we are on the web. So we want to go ahead and return our view. So we just go ahead and do a similar thing into here but we render the not found HTML again, passing through the response into that method. Now what we can do is return our output with a new status code 404. So rather than duplicate this here and here or here and here, we just go ahead and do it as a last thing. So this should be enough to go ahead and make this work for both a API and web, but of course, feel free to refer back to this and include a default, change things over. It's entirely up to you what you do. Okay. So let's go ahead and test this out. Give this a refresh and we get our not found view with our 404 status, which is really important. Let's go ahead and grab this again. 
into here, go ahead and send the request. Notice that we still get the HTML view and that is simply because over in our headers, we're not sending any headers through, but typically when you are consuming an API, you would send through the content type header. And in this case, we would know that this would be JSON. So we would always send this through when we're consuming an API, or if you're using a PHP library to consume an API, this should always be set as well. So now when I send this across, and what we would also need to do is send across the accept header as well. This is probably more likely going to be uh, what's pulling this out. And of course, you can check that out as well. So you can check that out in the abstract handler. If we just take a look at this, actually, uh, you can see here that um, it will grab the accept header and then work it out that way. So that's exactly what we need to include here. When we send this across, we get a JSON response with a 404 status. Very important. And this time we just see our JSON response. So that should give you enough to kind of work out what's going on here. You've created your own not found handler. You can update this as you need, make it a little bit more flexible if you want, change the response if you want to. You now have everything nicely broken up, extending the base handler so you can use that content type method. And that is pretty much it. So again, we uh, have just dived into the source code and I'd recommend always doing this if you're learning a framework. And now we have our own handler for our not found page, which is much nicer than the default.